Hey guys, Mr. Marcus here, and as you can see, back to some MLO Marcus Mafia Master League Online. I believe this is episode number 26, and today, as usual, we have two games in this episode. In the next episode, I'm going to try something a little bit different. At the start of the episode, I'm just going to give you a goal count. Um, I'm sure, well, I don't remember what program it's on, but it was on something, I don't remember what it is. But it's going to be something a little bit different, there's like a number of goals which are in the episode at the beginning of the episode, which is... Maybe quite funny or something, I don't know. But anyway, in the first match of this episode, we face off against a guy who has the likes of Mai Kong Lete, Giovanni Dos Santos, Dario Serna, Wellington Nen, Galeska. Of course, he's got the relatively decent team, but in goal, he has the big beast that is Eva Gesic, which basically sort of, it sort of meant that I'd probably have a chance in this game, which is basically what I expected. Of course, trying out this new formation of 4 1 2 1 2. And basically, instead of it being a 4 1 2 1 2 in terms of with def um, uh, a left and right midfielder, I actually took play with two centre midfielders. And I tried this at the end of the last episode, if I remember correctly, but they, I sort of figured out that this is probably my probably my most favourite formation to ever use, ever. It's just unbelievably overpowered. But anyway, <laughs> anyway, in the 23rd minute of the match here, he gets the ball here, Dario Serna tries to get shot away, and he actually does not get, he does get shot away actually with Serna. And it's a really poor shot from him. And basically from that, I saw a counter-attack with Sevilla. Gave it to Bednar. Bednar got a shot away. And it's a rel rel relatively decent save from Eva Gessick. And goal for him from the corner kick. I do not believe anything actually happens from this corner kick. Or do I score from it? Well, let us see. So Mulgrew takes a corner kick. He hits it in. And it comes to nothing. Rashra, however, picks it up. And goes to the byline. Crosses it in. Nice little crossing. And Collison actually jumps up and scores his first goal. For the club, so Jack Collison gets his first goal. Jack Collison is actually a right midfielder, but he can actually get a 77 rated, I think, at centre midfield. So he's not actually too bad for one of those sort of players. But in the 37th minute, he plays a nice ball through the Giovanni Dos Santos. I do really poor defending, and he just pops it in the back of the net. So I was sort of looking at the team and where I need to improve. So I was always thinking maybe my, my left back's position is more or less quite solid, like it's a Butner and... Um, Charlie Mulgrew, that's nice and easy. Maybe my centre forward line could potentially be improved. But a nice little one, two, three pass and triangular pass and Menendino for a goal and Menendino scores. So basically I was going into this match and I just thought maybe I'd just play, play a couple of games, eh? And the amount of times this guy attempted to do what he's doing here by trying to do a chip through ball and like I've sort of noticed that the chip through ball has sort of died down a lot. And because it, it's a lot more difficult to, of course, pull it off in this game. As you can see, my pass completion percentage of 56%. God, my... For some reason, like, I just can't seem to pass the ball properly. I think it's because my I'm, a t I, I'm so offensively minded that I lose the ball in such ridiculous positions for no reason. Like, of course, my passing isn't actually bad. But, like, I think maybe that's one thing where Konami could potentially improve. But here, Sevilla gets through on goal and gets a shot that's actually a really good save from the goalkeeper. Men and Dino can't put the rebound away, but... Like I was saying, I think maybe Konami could improve by actually showing you how many passes you made. Like, show a sort of um, squawker, shot, um, you know, squawker the um, stats thing for football. If they showed like a sort of chart like that to show where your passes made, what players made the passes and whatnot, and like sort of directions of it. I mean, in the second half, I did improve and got a 60% pass completion percentage, but, and of course I won the game 2-1, but it would be quite cool to see the sort of more stats influence of the game um, actually portrayed properly in PES, which I think would be quite cool. But for, with that match, got 60 points, and I thought, okay, let's go about and see what I could potentially do to the squad and change some things about. So I actually released Minandino, and I don't remember why I released Minandino, but I released him because I thought, well, I think I'm done with him personally. I think he's 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 done what he could possibly do for the club, and that's really all I needed. So as we could see in that ridiculous goal from Giovanni Dos Santos, I thought, eh, let's go, buy, go out and buy a new goalkeeper. So I went out and bought this Kato guy, this Japanese player, and for some reason, passing went down, shooting went down, all that sort of rubbish. But my defense went up, and my goalkeeping was basically my goalkeeper's basically improved, which is basically what I wanted. So, with that being said, this is the second match and the final match of this episode, and it was against some quite a difficult dude, if I remember correctly. Yeah, he had a rating of three nine one, team strength level two, and his team name was FC. But with that, of course, two consecutive wins get your one point three times bonus or whatever uh, um, multiplier, and I, I like some things, but I mean, soon I think I might be releasing a video on how to how they could potentially improve MLO next for PES 2015, and I'll probably do it with um, some collaborators rather than just doing it myself. I think I might actually do a uh, thing of how I personally think they should improve PES MLO in terms of 
not just MLO but PES in general in terms of the menu and whatnot. Maybe like do a fake menu of sort of a I completely forgot what the name is right now. But with with that and the eighth minute of this match, this guy was the most ridiculous player ever. He played so much attacking football that he left so many gaps at the back. And Bednar threw on goal, and Bednar actually chips the goalkeeper like an absolute beast. And I was sort of I was happy that he played attacking football because, of course, attacking football always leads to having loads of gaps at the back and whatnot for, for me to, to sort of take advantage of. But a nice ball from, I think it was uh, Vidra to Galaska. Galaska gets a shot, which is a really poor shot. Like, our attacking play in this match was absolutely dreadful. But here, goalkeeper does actually relatively decent to put him off. I mean, he really should have scored there with Bodmer. And in the 29th minute here, he runs on the left-hand side of Wellington, then crosses it in, Bodmer gets his head on it, and Kato makes a very good save. Now, I want to just know if I have any Japanese people watching, is it Kato or Kato? Because I just want to know, because I thought I like to get my pronunciations correct, even though I say Martin Vidra maybe nearly every single match when it's Maki Vidra. But with that being said, in the 32nd minute here, I sort of just I was taking my time going about, playing nice little 1-2s and 3s and 4s, and then eventually losing the ball with Roman Bednar, and I sort of noticed how bad Bednar actually is. So, I think I might have to end up getting rid of him, maybe move, uh, maybe replacing him with someone better. But there, as you see, John Joe Shelby plays an absolutely fantastic ball, and it's for own goal for Bednar, but again, referee blows the whistle for half-time. Well, so, 1-0 at half-time, and again, our pass completion percentage, identical in the first half once again with a 56 percentage per, um, percentile so into the second half and we sort of we sort of, sort of died down in the second half quite a lot Vidra sort of did not get, didn't really get many chances in this game in general and sort of just he's a good player when it comes to pushing players off the ball and getting shots where he's actually really accurate with his finishing when he's on a relatively decent form stat when it's either green or more he's really really good when he's blue he's relatively poor as you would expect, but in the 71st minute, basically from the corner kick, Rashtra runs on the right again, crosses it in, it's a really good cross in, and John Joe Shelby headers it onto the cross, onto the post, sorry. But I got a free kick, and I was like, eh, why not take a shot from here? So Charlie McGrew lines it up perfectly, and actually take a shot from 22 metres out, which is a bit ridiculous, because it's about 20 yards out. Get a shot away, and it hits off the bar, it, it hits off the post again, hits off the woodwork. So unfortunately, cannot get that second goal. But in the 85th minute, I got a free kick, and again, I cannot have shot of Charlie Mulgrew. And it's a bit ridiculous that Charlie Mulgrew is like the free kicks in this game. Whenever whenever someone scores a free kick against me, I don't usually watch it because it's not really that difficult to score a free kick. I thought it was when it when they first released the system because I mean I didn't think it would be that difficult. It, it's relatively simple to master, and I sort of mastered it. You'll see in probably in. So probably different um different videos of me playing the game in general and you see me scoring free kicks all the goddamn time because i just find it really easy just aim it over the wall do the exact same amount of power you need to do in it and boom top corner finish every time but coming at the last minutes of the match here vidra gets it doesn't it actually doesn't get his head on the ball there but um the it's relatively it's actually quite good defending from hemi as he heads out of play and then it comes basically for me to just throw it back in I throw it straight to uh, Galaska. Galaska hits it around the corner to Vidra. And Vidra takes a touch. Should really, maybe should have hit it maybe first time. But it doesn't really matter anything because they actually won the game 2 and uh, 1 0, sorry. So, with a 1 0 win, it's all went into the sort of went into the sort of break before I would play the next matches. Thinking, where could I potentially improve? And that's really all I need to know. So, again, identical pass completion percentage. That doesn't really change anything. Man of the match went to John Joe Shelby, ridiculously enough. And, of course, this is the end of the episode. So, if you have enjoyed this episode of Master League Online, subscribe to my channel for more, and catch you later.